welcome to October 24th. Yes, officially the best day of every month is the 24th of any month. Number 24 in anything is the best, right? Yeah, I might be a little biased, of course. But I'm excited about this month. I'm excited about the book that we just got through reading. And more importantly, before we jump into the book, I'm excited to let you know that my dad, after having a super rough year, has finally gone home from the hospital. So keep praying, praying, praying for him and everything that our family had gone through and the family that we received the heart from, continue to pray for them as well. Um, it's just absolutely amazing to have my dad have a second life and, you know, Lord willing, everything will continue to go as planned. Um, so let's jump into the book, Atomic, Atomic Habits. Tiny changes, remarkable results, atomic habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones by James Clear. If you have not read this book, I suggest you read it. And I will be honest, um, it took me a little bit to get through this, but as I got toward the end of the book and really got into some tangible things that I could do to work on my habits, it was extremely amazing. So check it out, check it out, check it out. All right, atomic habits. Tiny change, a marginal gain, a 1% improvement. And that's what really this, this book is all about. How do you get 1% better in every single thing that you do? So I have a, a note, I have some notes that I took while I was reading this book, but quality of life, our quality of life depends on the quality of habit that we put into our lives. So I'm gonna say that one more time. A quality of life depends on the quality of habit that we each have. And through those habits, every single day, being able to focus on getting 1% better, and that's the marginal atomic habit that we can create in our own life. I like this book because James Clear, he does a great job of putting different graphs in here so that you're able to kind of not only talk about it and go through it, but he does a good job of putting things together. And we're going to go through a couple of them, but... The first thing he talked about, he had four laws in how to create good habits. There's always a cue, a craving, a response, and a reward. So how to create a good habit, make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying. When you look at your life and you look at things that you want to do in creating good habits, Sometimes you have to put ourselves in a position. Like for me, my habit now is I get up every single, well not every day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the day that I'm in town and I work out from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. at Train Yard 317. The night before, I literally will lay out every single thing that I need to, to work out. And then when I leave the gym in the morning, I go down to Banker's Life, take a shower there. So I not only have to pack, get myself ready for my workout, but I gotta get myself ready for the day ahead as well. So making it obvious, making it attractive, I obviously like to work out, but I have a goal in mind and something that I really want to achieve, so that makes it attractive. Make it easy, well the workouts are anything but easy, but they're a lot of fun, and I think being able to know every single day is going to be something different, that's what makes it easy, makes it attractive, and then makes it satisfying, well one day I'll reach my goal and my dream of Making it back, I want to go back to American Ninja Warrior and I really want to hit the buzzer, like that is my goal. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. All right, so the three or maybe four things that I really, really took away from the book outside of how to create a good habit. But the first one, how to stop procrastinating using the two minute rule. We always say, oh, I don't have enough time to do that. Oh, I can't do that. Hey, have you? oh, I don't have enough time. Well, in the book, Clear talks about the two minute rule. And in building a habit, he talks about what can you do. So for me, I really want to get, I read, and I'm always carrying my book, but some days I don't read as much as I read other days. And being able to do a habit, a habit is something that you do every day. So for me, one thing that I want to do is, I want to pick up this book every day, whatever book I'm reading. And so if I can start with two minutes, and that's what he said, let's start with two minutes. Set your timer, set your clock, just read or write or whatever it is. You want to be an author, you want to, you know, work out, whatever it is. Spend two minutes doing it. And then do that for a week and then the next week add another minute. And then the next week add another minute until it becomes a habit that your mind is trained to do. So I really, really like that and being able to 
focus on two minutes every day, whatever it is that I'm trying to do, build it into my habit, and that's what I wanna do. So, the two minute rule, don't procrastinate. Start with two minutes, build on two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, all the way up to however long you have, but we have time for two minutes. Think about it. Second thing I like, the commitment device. A choice you make in the present that controls your action in the future. Well, I really like that. I mean, obviously, whatever choices you make now, and I think this can also apply to finances, right? We make sacrifices now on our finances so that one day we can save money and, you know, we can buy whatever it is, whatever that next thing is that we're trying to achieve or accomplish or, or get. So uh, the commitment device is a choice, like I said, a choice in the, you make in the present that controls your actions in the future. It is a way to lock in future behavior, bind you to good habits, and restrict you from bad ones. So, I mean, the use, it's very useful because it enables you to take advantage of good intention before you can fall victim to temptation. So, I really want that cookie, I really want this, so let's look at something bigger. You know, I really want to work out, but, eh. So, trying to find something to do every day. What can I commit to do every day? What is that device that I can... I can walk, I can, when I'm at work, I can take the stairs more than taking the elevator. I mean, there's so many things that we can use that will help us get to our commit, being able to be our commitment device. And the third thing that I like is being able to stay committed even through the boredom. And he talks a little bit about being able to, being able to, to achieve, to master something. So, you know, the question came up, oh man, what do, you, what do you think really successful people do? Well, they commit to some type of mastery. They commit themselves to being good and then eventually being great at something. And when the question was asked, oh, well, you know, you gotta, in basketball, you gotta be this, you gotta be athletic, you gotta be strong, you gotta be quick, you gotta all these different things. But at the end of the day, Clear talks about the most important thing is being able to master when things get bored. When you start getting bored, you do something, you know, even the kids that I work with, oh, we're gonna do layups. Oh, I do layups every day, I don't wanna do layups. But even as a professional, we do layups, we do ball handling, we do passing, we do defense, we do all the things that we started off with when we were young, we're still doing them as we're getting older. And so the importance of being able to master something, the importance of being able to get through the boredom factor and continue to be great and continue to master in your mind that skill of being great, but yet another habit, right? Another habit builds another habit, builds another habit, and that is what we are here to talk about, atomic habits, okay? So, and then my last thing, and I actually read this uh, earlier this morning, again, because I really liked it, but kind of going back to what we just talked about, the staying committed and being able to master something. Well, this one says, mastery is the process of narrowing your focus to a tiny element of success repeating it until you have internalized the skill and then using this new habit as a foundation to advance to the next frontier of your development. Old tasks become easier every single time you do them. So once again, let's go to basketball. You know what, let's go to professional world. I remember the first time that I had to do a, um, an expense report. I had no, never done an expense report. It probably took me literally about two hours to do one expense report just because I had never done it. So I had to figure out what does it look like, what am I supposed to be doing, what should I be tracking. I went online, I Googled a whole bunch of things, I didn't like the way those looked, I started one, I finished, I didn't finish it, I started another one. But the more and more that I had to do them now, it's kind of like old hat. It takes me about 10 minutes, if that, 10 minutes to get my expense report done. But think about all the stuff that it took to get me to that point. Same thing in basketball. You want to be a great basketball player, well, you got to start off with all the skill sets first, right? You got to become a good defender, become a good dribbler, become a good shooter, become a great team, a great, not a good, a great teammate. But really talked about being able to master something. Um, and through the book, as you look through it, which I'm now telling you that you should read the book, not on, I can't tell you everything that's great about it. But he talks about uh, later, later on, it uh, includes Pat Riley and talked about a system that he put into play to be able to evaluate his players, which I am actually going to do that for next year because I think this system is really cool. So I can't tell you what it is. You gotta go get the book, you gotta read it. But ultimately, I really enjoy this book because I think that even for me, one challenge that 
I'm going to do, we have a speaker series here at Tease Me every Tuesday. But one thing that our one of our speakers talked about was just getting into a habit of writing every single day. I used to write a lot, I used to journal, I used to do a lot of things. And I kind of went away from it as I've gotten busier and the world has moved. But one thing that I'm going to commit starting November 1st is every single day for at least 30 days, I'm going to, I have a journal. I'm going to write my journal. I'm going to make sure that every day, and I think what I'm going to focus on is the thing that I'm, like, I feel like I've been extremely blessed. And so the thing that I'm grateful for. I'll start with kind of a grateful journey. And even with the gratefulness, really thinking about some of the things that maybe uh, that I want to that I want to accomplish that I want to achieve and I feel like every day a new idea comes oh I should do this I should do that but just like ideas come if you don't write them down they go away and so really wanting to focus on being grateful in every single thing so I'm going to do my grateful journey but then the second thing is writing down ideas that I have as they come up and every day I want to be able to write down at least one idea and next year or even at the end of the month let's just say one month at a time at the end of the month I want to evaluate what, what ideas I had and what ideas were accomplished from the first initial write-off. So you can join me on the journey. November 1st, we'll start. You got a couple days to get your mind right. Go buy you a really cool journal. I love journals. As you see, I always have a journal and I kind of find stickers and all kinds of stuff. So, yep, join me on the journey. And last but not least, before we leave, I know you are so excited about what the next book is. Vine is over there like what is it what is it she read every book not nah. mm -hmm. yeah okay so the next book we just had a guest speaker at Banker's Life John Gordon have you heard of him he is amazing if you have not we read the energy bus as a team a few years ago but the next book he left us a book for us to read the power of a positive team by John Gordon and everybody's like oh I don't have a team we all have teams we have teams at work we have teams if you play on a team we have teams in our individual life relationship friendship like we all have teams but wouldn't you want to be on a great positive team nobody wants to be I don't like being around negative people and I, I like being around positive people so let's build a positive team let's continue to work together let's continue to read together this is a smaller read look you see it's not as thick so this means that you should get through this uh, what a day we can give you a day to read this maybe two all right i'll give you a week how about i give you a whole month all right we'll, we'll reconvene next month on the 24th what is that is that thanksgiving right around thanksgiving so be thankful be grateful that i'm giving you another book to read and you have another month and we're going to do the grateful journey because it's thanksgiving so how can we not be thankful about thankful about or for something so i appreciate you all i hope you have, you have loved the journey that we've been on remember why are we on this journey because of my one word focus 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 into being a great leader a great teammate and just been great overall so until next month i'm thankful for you i can't wait to read the power of a positive team and i hope that you can't wait either i'll see you next month november 24th be there